The Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the Corn School. Today I'm down at Ridgetown College catching up with Colin Elgy, OMAFA Soil Fertility Specialist. Sir, how are you doing? I'm not too bad, Baron. How about yourself? We're doing good. Uh, we're, we're trying to try to beat the rain here because uh, we need to talk about side dress nitrogen corn uh, that time of year. Um, Colin, when it comes to this conversation, every year is different. Um, and this is no, no different. Um, tell us about this year. Uh, we got off to a nice start in April, then it got cool. What does that mean for side dressing? Well, when it comes to really determining what rate we need to side dress, the most important part, or one of the most important parts, is what nitrogen is actually coming from that soil. Yeah. So we know that all the nitrogen that goes into our corn crop, it doesn't just come from the fertilizer. A lot of that comes from that soil organic matter, things like crop residue, manure, cover crops, all that stuff mineralizing in the soil. So when we've had a cool spring like we've had this year, a lot of that conversion, those microbes haven't been able to work to really get to work to mineralize that nitrogen, which means we've got a lower soil supply overall. Yeah, so now, um, looking at some numbers here, um, here at Ridgetown, typically around 450 CHUs through the end of May, this year around 400. And uh, so, and I'm hearing that 10% that number, uh, lower heat, you know, across this region. What does that, what does that mean? So, yeah, it, it's exactly right. It's been cooler. We can, we can identify that. We've got the evidence. So. We can assume that our soils, they're not producing that same nitrogen. It's not as simple as, you know, we've got 10% less nitrogen or, you know, uh, we reduce it by any, any specific factor. Because it's so variable field to field and even within fields that uh, we, we can assume that we've got less nitrogen, but we really don't know on a field by field basis. Yeah. So we got to do some testing, right? Pre-side dress nitrate testing. Exactly. Yep. And that's really the best way to figure out what's going on on your own field. So, you know, we've, we, can, we can use a lot of different tools. We've got the corn nitrogen calculator. We've got AgriSuite that can give us a pretty good indication of uh, what nitrogen rate we should maybe be aiming for. Um, but really, it comes down to a year-by-year -year difference that, you know, a soil test is going to tell you a lot better than a, a, a calculator can. Yeah. So what can we expect to see on, on that test, um, Colin, when we're pulling in, you know, and how do, how do growers read it and how do they react? Yeah, so the, the key is make sure you're testing right. So that involves taking a, a core that's 30 centimeters or 12 inches deep, taking it just before you plan to go into the field with enough turnaround time from the lab. Uh, but really, if you got that test good, you get a, the analysis back, and you're going to be looking at those, those nitrate and ammonium readings. Uh, we've got uh, tables published in our agronomy guide that can give you a good indication of the rate that you should be applying based on that. But the important factor with that is it's those tables, those recommendations are only calibrated if you've got less than 30 pounds of nitrogen up front. So if you've got manure applied to the field, if you've got uh, a big credit that you're expecting from red clover the previous year, if you've got 100 pounds of nitrogen already broadcast on the field, it, you really can't go by those recommendations. Yeah. And so where, where that number comes into effect is kind of in a long-term sense. If you've got a, a good database of here's what I've done in past years, well, if this is reading higher, then maybe I can cut back on my nitrogen rate. If it's reading lower, like we'd expect this year, you might have to bump that rate a yeah. bit higher. Hey, a couple of other things. Um, nitrogen stabilizers. Now, I mean, something that you've been sort of talking a lot about in the last few years, and it really sort of fits depending on what your strategy is, how much you've got up front and how much you're going to need from a nitrogen perspective late in the season. Exactly. And so the, whether or not it makes sense to use a nitrogen stabilizer when you're side dressing really comes down to whether you've got that risk of loss. And so far this year, I think we've probably had less loss than we normally would just because it's been cool. We haven't had a lot of that volatilization potential. But going in season, we've really got to look at what that risk is. So if you're applying nitrogen, broadcasting urea into a, into the crop like this, where uh, you know we're expecting hot and dry temperatures for two weeks before the next rainfall, it's probably going to pay to use a, a stabilizer. Right. If we're putting it on, knifing in urea right before a, a one-inch rainfall, well, that's probably where they're, they're maybe not going to pay. They're still absolutely going to do their job, but they might not have that same return. Yeah. Well, um, some work to do, um, some, some, some math to do. Um, Colin, thanks for making the time. Always great to have you on uh, 
real agriculture and the corn school, uh, you got to get some cores. Go ahead. Yeah, let's do it.